Welcome to KNN. KNN is brought to you by Bob Knackle, Chairman of New York Investment Sales at JLL. Hi, I'm John Hageman, Managing Director at JLL. Welcome to KNN. Today I'm here with Bob Knackle, Chairman of New York Investment Sales. And today we're going to talk about the second quarter investment sales numbers in New York. So, Bob, now that the second quarter is behind us, let's talk about the investment sales numbers and what we saw in the market. Well, Hags, it was uh, an improvement from the first quarter, but that's really not saying much, if you recall. (laughs) Uh, First quarter numbers were absolutely (laughs) awful. Uh, It was the worst quarterly total that we've had, only $1.2 billion in sales in the first quarter. That was the lowest quarterly total for the cycle and the lowest quarterly total going back to 2009. Number of properties sold was only 19 in the the first quarter of the year. So if you annualize those numbers, we're down by over 90% in both of those metrics. So first quarter was was abysmal to say the least. Second quarter picked up a little bit. So um, we were very pleased with the activity that we saw. And again, we're talking about the investment sales market in Manhattan for properties selling for over $10 million. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the second quarter of this year, we had $3.3 billion. So the $1.2 billion increased to $3.3 billion, which was a nice increase. That's putting us on pace. The first half of the year is putting us on pace for about $9 billion for the year, which still would be down about 19% from the $11.1 billion that we had last year. It's nice to see that we're heading in the right direction, uh, but if the market continues on that $9 billion pace, then that will end up being the lowest yearly total going back to 2009. So, um, but we think that that will pick up uh, uh, as we go throughout the year. So Bob, you talked about how it compared to 2009 numbers and level. How does that compare to the peak of the cycle that we had in you know, 14 and 15? Yeah, the peak of the cycle dollar volume 2015 is 57 and a half billion. So uh, if we continue on the nine billion dollar pace, we'd be 84 percent below that figure. So uh, you know, still a long way to go. But again, we have to focus on the direction of the market, not the absolute numbers. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the direction is positive. So now we've talked about dollar volume. Let's get into, as we always do, number of properties sold. Right. And number of properties sold, as I always say, is indicative, more indicative of what's happening in the market because several large transactions can skew the dollar figures uh, either high or low, um, whether they happen or they don't happen. But number of properties sold is really the main indicator of what's happening in the market. Uh, as I said earlier, the first quarter of 21, we had only 19 properties selling for over $10 million in Manhattan. That number increased to 47 in the second quarter. So again, a nice healthy increase. Uh, that actually puts the market on pace for about 132 this year, which would be an increase of 27% over where we were last year when there was 104 sales. Um, so that's a very, very positive thing. And again, you, I know you're going to ask me about sure. how it compares to the peak. Yeah. In 2015, 484 properties were sold. So 132 is down, would be down 73% from where we were at the peak of the market. But again, Hags, we have to look at direction. The direction is positive. There's a lot of positive psychology in the market. We think that volume is going to pick up as we go throughout the year. What are some of the things, Bob, that you think are driving this positivity that we're seeing and this increase in the market? Well, a number of things. First of all, you look, go to 40,000 feet. We've Mm -hmm. been in this this malaise, this reduction in the volume of sales for over five years now. So I think people just naturally want to get out there and start doing stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's a lot of pent up demand from sellers. There's a lot of capital that's been raised to buy property. Uh, We see cap rates in New York are now higher than they are around the rest of the country, which is the first time that's ever happened and the well first time in the 37 years I've been doing this that we've seen that Um, and I think the vaccine has been kicking in life is getting back to normal a little bit Uh, post Labor Day we're expecting a big increase in the physical occupancy in office buildings we're seeing great momentum in the residential market both in rentals where a lot of rents that are being achieved today are higher than pre-COVID rents Uh, we're seeing condo sales being very robust Uh, There's a lot of positive momentum in the market. So 
Uh, I think that uh, the psychology that people have is positive. We see an increase in our, our number of BOVs that we're doing. Mm -hmm. We see an increase in the listings we have. The bidding activity on the listings we have is very robust. So I certainly expect that the numbers will continue to increase in the third quarter. And we're in the middle of the third quarter right now as we're filming this. Uh, we don't have a, a handle on what those numbers are going to be like, but I'm sure they're going to be increased over what we saw in the second quarter. And I think fourth quarter probably will be a huge increase, uh, particularly if there's some externality like tax policy changes that mm -hmm. will incentivize people to do things before year end. Uh, but I'm very optimistic about where we're heading, both with dollar volume and number of properties sold by the end of the year. Bob, we just talked about the overall market. Now let's get into maybe some of the specific property types and what's happened and what those numbers look like. Sure, Hags. Well, we've seen a, a nice increase in multifamily sales. Mm -hmm. um, remarkable Finally. increase. Uh, and I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that cap rates around the country have fallen so much. Mm -hmm. So it looks relative, uh, relatively inexpensive uh, in Manhattan today, despite the political headwinds. And we're going to get into that in a subsequent episode, mm -hmm. uh, talking about what the, the political horizon looks like for multifamily. But in the first quarter, there were only three sales over $10 million in the multifamily space in Manhattan. Second quarter, that went up to 21 sales. Uh, and based on the activity we're seeing on our current stock of listings, that number is going to increase in the third quarter, I'm sure. Um, if we look at the office sector, another sector where we've had significant increases in the first quarter of this year, there were only four office buildings sold in Manhattan for over $10 million. That number increased to 10. Mm -hmm. And importantly, uh, the four that sold in the first quarter of this year aggregated to less than $100 million of sales volume, where the 10 that sold in the second quarter aggregated to about $1.1 billion. Uh, so we're seeing more activity and we, we're hearing about deals that are being done today on larger office buildings that um, will increase those numbers significantly as we move forward. Um, the hotel sector is also one uh, that has had some, some good robust activity, price discovery. Only one hotel sold in Manhattan over $10 million in the first quarter of the year. Mm -hmm. There were seven sold in the second quarter. That was the highest quarterly total going back to 2016. Mm -hmm. So there's good momentum in the hotel market. Um, and so, you know, in those sectors, we're seeing a lot of, uh, of good momentum. So the only two that you didn't mention so far was retail and land. What are, what are we seeing there? Well, retail market, we're going to uh, put off. We're going to do an episode subsequently on that. But, uh, you know, there were only two retail deals done over $10 million in the second quarter of the year. Uh, so slow activity in retail and land also uh, relatively slow where uh, in the first quarter there were three land sales in Manhattan over $10 million, second quarter only two. We know for a fact that's going to change because already in the third quarter we've, sure. we've sold a uh, number of sites. Uh, over $10 million. And retail's and picking up, certainly. Retail mm -hmm. is definitely picking up. We see activity in retail picking up. So I think those two sectors are lagging a little bit, but based on what we're seeing in the market, we think retail is on the upswing and uh, land is certainly going to be on the upswing in terms of number of properties sold. And we're actually seeing a little bit of upward pressure on pricing for the first time in five years in a number of these sectors. So um, those are all very positive things for the market moving forward. So if we were to summarize, Bob, the overall direction, the numbers are not that great, but the overall direction of the market sounds like it's that, really going in the right direction. Absolutely, price. Hags. And that, that's the important thing. We can't look at the absolute numbers. I mean, absolute numbers are very meaningful for folks who are in the transaction business. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the fact is that the numbers are trending positively. And I've always said one quarter doesn't make a trend. So right. we can't look at the second quarter and say, oh, that's great. But we really, really believe that the, uh, the third quarter of the year is going to be very positive, as will the fourth quarter. And once we get two or three quarters in a row, the market is set to take off. So we're, uh, we're fully expecting that uh, the yearly totals will be a lot better than the pace that we're on today. And uh, that should be good news for all of us.